Hello and welcome to Bio Lessons to Go. I'm Mr. Dove, and today we'll be exploring cloning. So, what is cloning? Well, cloning is a uh, pretty generic term that's used to describe a number of different processes that can be used to produce genetically identical individuals. Um, those individuals, uh, the copied material which has the same genetic makeup as the original, is called the clone. So, for example, um, here we have a little puppy called Snuppy, and Snuppy is the clone of the larger dog that's sitting next to him, this three-year-old Afghan hound. They took some skin cells, and they placed that into an egg, and then put that into a, uh, a surrogate mother, and produced our clone here. Now, cloning is actually a natural process. Some plants and single-celled organisms that reproduce asexually um, will produce genetically identical offspring. So essentially, they're creating their own clones. For example, here we have an organism called a hydra. They're related to jellyfish. Um, on one side, it's producing what's called a bud. And that bud is going to grow and divide, it's using mitosis, and eventually it's going to pop off and it's going to be genetically identical um, to its parent. Um, it's basically created its own clone. Identical twins are another example of natural cloning. Um, at some point during development, a single fertilized egg uh, splits such that we have two separately dividing entities um, producing two offspring that are genetically identical to one another, another natural clone. Now there are three types of artificial cloning, gene cloning, reproductive cloning, and therapeutic cloning. Gene cloning is where we try to produce copies of genes or just segments of DNA. In gene cloning, one way that we can do that is uh, to remove the gene of interest and insert that into a plasmid. The plasmid goes into a, a bacteria and is allowed to reproduce. Um, that bacteria is now has our gene of interest and we can do a lot of different research with that particular um, with that gene of interest. We can either um, allow for the production of a protein um, so that we can treat diseases like have a blood clots or uh, help people who has problems with growth to produce human growth hormone, maybe produce insulin. Um, another way that we can do that is to uh, extract those copies of the gene and use that to put that gene into other organisms like um, to induce resistance to certain pests um, or have that gene alter um, an organism so that um, they're more able to clean up toxic waste. Reproductive cloning um, is a little bit different in that we're producing copies of a whole organism. Reproductive cloning in plants have been done for a long time. Um, mostly it's because plant tissues um, retain their ability oftentimes to become whole organisms. Um, they are, uh, contain a lot of totipotent tissues. Uh, the root uh, the tips of roots, um, a lot of stems um, can be used to kind of propagate um, some new clone plants. Whereas cloning animals is a little more difficult. One of the earliest examples of cloning occurred in 1902 when Hans Spiemann um, took a strand of his baby's hair to split a salamander egg in two. And as a result, he was able to induce the development of two genetically identical salamanders, kind of a forced twinning. And this was an early example of cloning. Today, a lot of our cloning uses a technique called somatic cell nuclear transfer. In somatic cell nuclear transfer, um, we obtain some uh, genetic material from our donor organism. We're, we then need an egg uh, which to put that genetic material in.
unfortunately, our egg contains its own genetic material, and so we have to get rid of that um, either by using ultraviolet light or um, using a little needle to suck out that haploid nucleus so that we end up with an egg that is empty. We then fuse um, our donor's DNA with our egg and then culture that, let that grow in culture until it's an early embryo and then implant that into our surrogate mother um, and then hopefully we'll end up with a clone that has the exact same genetic material as the donor. Now the clones don't always end up looking identical. Even though they have shared the same genetic material, we've learned that the environment plays a big role in how an organism turns out. In fact, there's a whole new science of genetics uh, devoted to studying this, epigenetics. A great example of this was seen in one of the first clone cats. Her name was Cece. Um, she, in terms of her coloration, looks nothing like her mother here. And that's because um, the color trait is carried on the X chromosome. And females get two copies of that. And sometimes you actually get something called X inactivation, where one of the X's are actually shut off, and so um, only one of the two genes are being expressed. And so since this can happen uh, differently in each um, cell that's expressing color, we can get a completely different um, color pattern as a result of those changes occurring from the environment. Now there are some potential applications to um, cloning animals. Um, one example is we could uh, maybe make copies of animals that have potential benefits in the world of medicine. Um, we're inserting genes into um, organisms like goats and sheep that um, allow them to produce valuable medicines. Um, because of genetics, there's a chance that when they make babies that they could pass that gene on to their offspring or maybe not. And because they're such a valuable organism, if we clone them, that would ensure that we would have organisms that had that desired gene and producing that desired trait. Um, not just genetically transformed organisms, but any other organism that, like for instance, produces a lot of milk or produces particular lean meat, could be cloned um, for use in agriculture. Um, a big drawback to that is that it is a very costly process um, to clone organisms, and so we won't see this being used very frequently right now. Um, another option is to build populations of endangered organisms or possibly even recently extinct organisms that we may have the complete genome for. Um, opponents to this believe that we should focus our monies more on protecting the organisms that are present here rather than wasting valuable funds on um, you know, cloning organisms. Um, where we could perhaps save them for a lot cheaper if we just focus on the organisms that are present today. The last type of cloning is called therapeutic cloning. Here, we, we make embryonic stem cells so that we can do experiments um, that would be aimed at creating tissues um, to replace injured or diseased tissue. So with reproductive cloning, our end goal is to have those embryos implanted into a surrogate mother and hopefully turn out to be a healthy baby. With therapeutic cloning, we actually are going to break up that uh, embryo cells and use them in culture to create um, new cells like heart cells or lung cells, kidney cells. Now, the types of stem cells that we can use um, can either be embryonic stem cells or adult stem cells. So the embryonic stem cells um, are typically developed the same way we'd produce uh, for reproductive cloning, um, so that we have some embryonic cells that could potentially develop into a, an offspring if we placed it into a uterus. But instead, we break up those cells and use them uh, to produce stem cell lines for use in research. Um, adult stem cells, on the other hand, um, they're found in uh, different organs of the body 
and they are pluripotent. They have a potential to become a lot of different specialized tissues. One of the big um, controversies of using uh, embryonic stem cells in therapeutic cloning is that it could develop into an offspring if it were placed into a uterus. And uh, opponents of this process believe that if you are destroying embryonic cells, then you're potentially interrupting a life. And so to avoid that controversy, scientists hope that we can find a way to really maximize our use of adult stem cells because those would never um, have developed into anything other than other cell lines. Um, and so the more and more we study um, adult stem cells, the more potential that we find in them so that um, we can reap the benefits of uh, therapeutic cloning without any of the potential controversy. Ideally, uh, researchers hope to use stem cells to grow tissues to replace um, injured or diseased tissues so that we can help with a lot of different things and uh, spinal cord injury, uh, wound healing, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, um, muscular dystrophy, diabetes, um, heart attack. So there's a lot of potential uses for stem cells um, as long as we can find the ones that perhaps are less controversial to utilize. Anytime we're using uh, new techniques, um, there's a lot of ethical considerations um, that we have to think about um, before we embark upon them. Um, gene cloning, it's been very carefully regulated technique and it's accepted widely today um, and used routinely in a lot of labs. Um, the scientists there um, really have to reflect on the positives and negatives of what they're doing and, um, you know, uh, proceed carefully. With re reproductive cloning, um, right now we've pretty much just been um, cloning a lot of animals, um, like farm animals and the like, just to test out the process. But one of the big issues is that there's that potential of creating a human. Um, in the United States, uh, there's no federal funds that can go towards uh, cloning humans, uh, but that doesn't mean private entities can't embark upon that. Um, and of course other countries don't have the regulations that we do. And when you're talking about cloning humans, this could conflict with a lot of religious and societal values. Um, and so we really have to, to tread lightly um, when we think about cloning humans. Um, and then finally, like with therapeutic cloning, um, our big uh, bit of ethics is using those embryonic stem cells. Um, is it more ethical to protect the embryonic cells or to attempt to um, benefit the sick or injured people. Um, right now we're kind of at a standstill in terms of you know making that headway so hopefully um, our use of adult stem cells will allow us um, to benefit those um, sick and injured people um, without uh, crossing a lot of those ethical boundaries. So cloning is one of those um, 21st century um, science phenomenon um, that continue to have um, new discoveries and so as we embark on these discoveries we, we need to make sure that um, you know we we think about the ethical considerations and um, always kind of use that precautionary approach as we utilize these techniques.